welcome to these continuing videos on me using the Sauerman Psyker 130 flue gas analyzer. Now this is part six, so if you haven't seen the other five parts, why not? But I will leave links in the description below so you can check those out after you've watched this one. Anyway, what's today's video about? Well, it's about this little magic wand. So this is the ambient air probe for CO2. Basically what it does is it plugs into here. You can't really get it wrong because there is a space for it to plug in and it just plugs in like that. So what I've got to do now is turn this on and get it ready for doing the ambient air for CO2. Now, I can't be in the room while I'm doing this test. So I've come up with an idea. So I've got one of my poles from my green screen with a couple of the clamps and I'm going to be clamping this to the pole, leaving this in the room and then doing the test. But before we do this test, why, why do we need to do it? Well, gas safe in their ultimate wisdom have changed their technical bulletin for uh, 005A. Basically, they've withdrawn it because they say the information in there is not good enough now. So we need to refer to uh, building regulations O and F, F for ventilation and O is for overheating, to uh, see what we need to do if we have things like a kitchen where they've built a conservatory on the back and there's no purge ventilation for it. So basically what we've got to do now is, no purge ventilation, we'll need to pour uh, mechanical extraction in. But this is a good way of testing what levels are in the room when the cooker is running. So that's what I'm going to do on this video. I'm going to get one of the cookers up and running and then leave this running in the room, close the door, close the windows and then see what levels of CO2 and CO because this will also monitor the CO as well in the room. But first of all, let's see what maximum levels we can achieve where it's still safe to continue to be in that room. Now, these are the limits which have been given by the health and safety executive for rooms, basically, for things like classrooms, offices, workplace, that kind of thing. So, I think most of us know now, with all the global warming information what's out there, that the atmosphere has about 0.04% of CO2 in it, or 400 parts per million. But the HSE says, if we've got a long-term exposure, so like up to eight hours in the same room, we can't have more than 500 parts per million of CO2 in that room. But if we have a short-term exposure of uh, 1,500 parts per million of CO2, we can have that for a maximum of 15 minutes. Basically what they say is when you go over a thousand parts per million, your head starts to go a bit fuzzy. And if you go over 1,500, then you start to lose concentration. Maybe I'd better check the classroom next door Anna, and see what uh, CO2 we've got in there when I'm halfway through one of my theory classes. Anyway. Fresh air supply, it's done in litres a second now. So the fresh air supply can't go below eight. So they reckon eight to 10 litres per second per person. And they're saying a thousand parts per million is up to 10 litres per second. So we're talking about the air continually being changed in the room to stop us going drowsy and losing concentration and feeling unwell. The extract ventilation rates are all in document F, like I said, of the building regs. And it basically says, kitchen, if we have a hood to outside, then we need to have extraction of 30 litres per second. But if we have no cooker hood and it doesn't go direct to outside, 
then we need to have mechanical extraction at 60 litres per second. So if we do go to a kitchen where they built a conservatory on the back, it was quite complicated because we talked about floor areas and gaps on the doors and all that kind of stuff. And Gas Safe have just gone, well, that's all out of date now, so we're not even bothered. Really? So they've not given us any guidance. But basically what it says is, if we haven't got it, we're going to have mechanical extraction. So it's all about the purge extraction. So the removal of the CO2 uh, made by the cookers and cooking. Now, also it depends on the room size. Now we've got quite a big room here for the training room. I've just measured it and it's 5.7 meters by 4.5 meters by three meters. So it comes out at 76.95 meters. So quite a big room, a lot bigger than a standard kitchen would be. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what results we actually get from this. Now, another thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure we're away from the actual product we're testing. So if you were testing a classroom to see what CO2 the class was making, then I'd have to be, it says 500 mil, but at least a meter away from the, um, the, the breath, <laughs> because the closer you are to it, the obviously the bigger the reading you're gonna get. Also, it says to do the reading at head height. So if you were in a classroom, they'd be sat down, so you'd be doing it what their head is, height is here. Now we've got quite a big uh, height here. We've got three meters to 10 foot just over for the ceiling. So I'm gonna do it at my head, head height, stood up. Anyway, that's all that nonsense out of the way now. So let's finally get on with it and get this test done. But first I better show you how to turn it on and to set it up. Now, once you've initially turned it on, we need to press the little dots there. We need to go into other measurements. We need to go into UK tests. We need to press start so it purges and we need to have this connected. We now go into room safety. We now go into ambient air test and we're now ready to go. So all we do when we want to start the test is press start the test. So finally we're ready for doing the test. So I've got the probe clamped to my stand with my little clamps. I'm just going to turn this on, get it all ready for running and just leave it on this table here. Now the first test I'm going to do is like the benchmark. This is with no gas appliances running in this room. So it's only just had me in here talking nonsense for the last five or 10 minutes. So I'm gonna get out, once I've got this up and running, close the door, come back in 15 minutes time and see what it is just in the room as we start off with. So this is our starting point. So let's get on with that. So let's take a look at the results we've got. Remember, this is with no appliances running, nobody in the room. So we got a CO of zero, a CO2 of 747, peak duration zero. So it's saying our CO levels is normal and our CO2 levels is normal. Let's have a look at our readings per minute. So you can see after 10 minutes, 11, 12, 13, up to the 15 minutes. But as you can see, our CO2 levels are nearly half of what the HSE guidelines say of 800 parts per million as a maximum CO2 level indoors. So no CO and the highest CO2 reading, 463. Now, just before we actually finally do do this test, there is another way, which is actually a safer way of carrying out this test. So what I can do is I can use my smartphone to mirror the screen here, and I can be able to be out of the room and look at the screen on here to see exactly what's going on. So all I'd have to do is start the test with my phone, 
and then leave this, go out of the room, shut the door, and I've got all the readings here. So, if you want to be safe, mirror it with your smartphone. Now let's start this test with the four rings working on this cooker. So you can see at the moment our CO2 is 507. We can now start the test and then we will be back in 15 minutes. Okay, the 15 minutes are up. Let's have a look and see what we've got. I heard the temperature in here has gone up just because of that. Let's see what we've got at so it says CO peaked at zero, CO2 peaked at 4,318. Let's have a look at the values. So after 10 minutes, it was 3,552. And you can see it went up over the 15 minutes. But it does say CO levels is normal and CO2 levels are normal with just the four rings working on that oven. Okay, 15 minutes are up now with the cooker fully working. <laughs> God, the heat in here now, <laughs> unreal. Anyway, let's have a look. So again, it says we have a CO now of three. We have a CO2 of 4,755, but it still says our levels are normal. Let's check what happened. So within the first 10 minutes, no CO, then we went to two, two, then three. So you can see the highest reading, 4,755. So let's have a bit of fun. Let's put two cookers on, give it another 15 minutes and see what we actually get to. Well, that's messed the test up. <laughs> it's that warm in here, it's just set the heat alarms off. We don't have smoke alarms here, we have heat alarms and you walk in here, oh my God, the temperature is horrendous. And you can see we've been running 11 minutes, but we've got a CO of nine. But you can see at the top of the screen, it does say the CO2 levels exceeded 15,000 parts per million. So, <laughs> it's kind of messed everything up just because the heat is so much in here so there are two cookers going at the same time oh, it'll be interesting to see what temperature it actually is in here I'll find that out so the 15 minutes are up let's actually see what temperature we did get to uh, it's only saying it's 30.9 degrees in here but the ovens are off now they've been off for a few minutes so let's see what we actually got wow so if we look it can say our co peaked at uh 10 but it doesn't have a reading on the screen for our co2 but it says our co2 levels are too high so let's see exactly what happened well as you can see 
but you can see when I probably opened the door. But according to the World Health Organization, they recommend that indoor levels of CO must be below an average of 9 parts per million for an 8 hour period and below 25 parts per million for every hour period. So, we're on the borderlines there for our CO reading. But it's not done the CO2 readings because it's probably gone off the readings for the probe. So, it would have been interesting to see what they actually were or why it's actually done that. But anyway, don't have two cookers running at the same time with your door shut and all the windows closed because it's not good. Now, hopefully this little video has shown you how dangerous a cooker can be in somebody's kitchen if they haven't got a purge point. So a window or a door direct to outside. So if it does start to get a bit hot and stuffy in that room, they can open it. So if you are a gas engineer and you are going out to a cooker that is installed in a kitchen with no purge point, so no openable window or door, or no mechanical extraction. And then we could do it a bit of guidance, couldn't we, and see in what the readings, if they go over something, then we can class it as at risk or immediately dangerous. Anyway, go on gas safe, get your act together and get that sorted out. But hopefully it's also shown how good this little device is at detecting our CO2. So, Hopefully you've liked the video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Why is it do I want to do a little song? Anyway, see ya.